we introduce the notion of a system of linear equations and the notion of solutions of the system of linear equations. So now the general question is how to find solutions to systems of linear equations. Well, we look at the following example. And we suggest for this example a way that is referred to a solution that is referred to backwards substitution. Consider the following system. The first equation reads x minus y minus z equals 2. The second one is y plus 3z is 5 and 5z equals 10. Well, you immediately see that the system is quite easy to solve since the third row, when we multiply left and right by one-fifth, then the third row will change. The other two rows remain the same, so we repeat those in the new system of linear equations. So we end up by stating that z equals 2. Well, this system is equivalent with stating, well, we use the value z is 2 in the former and the second equation, so we get y is 5 minus 3z makes 1 minus 1, and now we use both values, z and y, to obtain a value for x, and x equals 2 plus y plus z. So we have a unique solution here, x equals 3 minus 1 and 2. So observe that we needed here that we have equivalent systems over here in the first step. We can go from the system on the right hand side back to the first system by multiplying the third equation with a constant 5, and we get 5z is 10 back. Again, look at the system of linear equations. We now consider the following example. It's comparable to, it's similar, very similar to the system we had, we, we've seen before. X minus Y minus Z equals 2, Y plus 3Z equals 5, and Y plus 8Z equals 1, or 15. So we, what we do now is we see here we have a variable y and here a variable y. We can get rid of one variable y by just subtracting row 2 from row 3. What we're going to do is we subtract from the value y plus 8z, y plus 3z. Since y plus 8z makes 15 and y plus 3z is 5, this equals 15 minus 5, so we get a different system here. And look what, what, we, what we derived. We derived the system that we've seen before, which can be solved by backward substitution. But the important thing is that we have equivalent systems here. Well, two systems are equivalent. It will allow for the following operations. Yeah, if the two systems are the same, up to interchanging um, rows. So whether we change the first row x minus y minus z equals 2 with the second one, it does not affect the solution. Another way, which we saw in part 1, is that multiplication by a constant unequal to 0. Yeah, if, we, if, we, if we multiply a row by a constant c unequal to 0, then we can return to the original row by multiplying by 1 over c. 
So if we change a row, make a row uh, ri star uh, is row i times c, then we can get back. So these this will still give equivalent systems. The last operation that will be very useful and that we used above is that addition of multiples of rows to another one will not affect the solution of a system. So above, we, uh, we uh, if we look at the right hand side, we can add again the second row to the third row and obtain the system on the left hand side back. So addition of multiples of rows, so if row i star is composed of row i plus k times rj, then nothing changes. So these operations that we discuss here, they can be undone. So that keeps the solution the same. So our strategy for solving systems is now going to be that we, just like the example above, that we try to remove variables as much as po possible. So here we removed the y variable on the third row and we, we were able to replace it by a zero. So strategy for solving systems is create as many zeros as possible. So you could call it operation clean sweep, which is called vegen in Dutch, of your system. We will now apply the technique that we've been discussing before. So consider the following example and we try to solve it, if at all possible. We try to create as many zeros as possible. So this 1x, 3x and 2x, we're going to create zeros at the, at, at the place of 3x and 2x. So we're going to sweep the x's in row 2 and row 3. So what is needed to do this? Well, actually we need, in order to get rid of the x's at row 2, we need to subtract 3 times row 1 from row 2. And in order to create a 0 in the third row for x, we need to subtract 2 times row 2 from row 3. So, the system we end up with, we have zeros in the second and third row as constants for x. So the second row, we subtracted three times row one, so for the y, we get the zero times y because this equals minus 3, minus 3 times minus 1, y. Well, in this fashion we continue. And in the third row we'll end up with 0 times x plus 1 times y plus 3 times z equals 5. Well, the system is, is already a little bit simpler because of the zeros. Yeah, the zeros we've created. So now we get the first line or the first equation x minus y minus z equals 2, the second one 5z equals 10, and the third one y plus 3z equals 5. Well, this is a system that is highly resembling the first example we've been discussing up to interchanging of rows. So if we interchange the row 3 in a row, 2, we get x minus y minus z equals 2, y plus 3z equals 5, and 5z equals 10. So we can, can follow the technique of sub, uh, a backward substitution to find a solution. So z will be 2, y will be minus 1, and x will be 3. So we get a unique solution here, minus 3, minus 1, and 2.
something you may have noticed along the way. Yeah, if we use the same example, and uh, now with the matrix of coefficients, if we only keep track of the coefficients, then actually we have enough information because we only repeated the x, y, and z, and all the all the the, the, the manipulations were on the coefficients of uh, the linear system. So now we form a matrix with only the coefficients. So on the left hand side of the blue line we get the coefficients before the variables on the right hand side we get uh, the known terms. Well th this is called the augmented matrix. So we now perform exactly the steps we've been doing before only now only we keep track of the coefficients. So we try to make a zero here. This three over here and this two over here they were meant to be zero in the second stage. So in the first step if we uh, subtract 3 times row 1 from row 2, we obtain 0, 0, 5 and 10. And in the third row, we'll, you will get 0, 1, 3 and 5. And the first line or the first row will be untouched. So now what we're going to do now? Well, actually, we need the, 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 the x here. So... Uh, that's the blue box indicating we're finished with the X. Now we exchange two rows, row 3 and row 2, which amounts to a new matrix of coefficients. 1 minus 1 minus 1, 2 on the first line, the first row, nothing changes. The second row will now be 1, 0, 1, 3, 5. And the third row will indicate 0, 0, 5, 10. And this coefficient matrix, now we are almost done. Backward substitution looks like this. The third row we manipulated. Uh, by multiplying the row with one fifth, then nothing changes except for the third row, where we end up with zero zero one two. And now the next step was that we we can create other zeros by adding row two to row one. Then we'll have the following coefficient matrix 1 0 2 7 1 0 1 3 5 and 0 0 1 2 so again we've been sweeping with the first variable sweeping with the second variable and now we're going to sweep with the third variable so the second row we subtract three times the third row in order to create zeros, a zero, and here a zero is obtained by subtracting two times the third row. So again, the coefficient matrix that we obtain here will have again two zeros more, and we'll see that we finalize our sweeping procedure because we have zeros for each variable except for one. So now we can speak of a kind of clean system. So if we return to the meaning of this coefficient matrix, then it says 1 times x plus 0 times y plus 0 times z equals 3, and 0 times x plus 1 times y plus 0 times z equals minus 1. That's the second row. And finally, the third row, 0 times x plus 0 times y plus 1 times z equals 2. And actually, we read from this system the vector x, y, z equals 3 minus 1, 2. 
So the solution is unique and actually we find the solution on the right hand side over here in the matrix. Consider the following example. Find all solutions for the following system of linear equations. And notice that here we have a variable k and this variable k or we have a constant k and k is a real number. So first of all we're going to convert this problem to the augmented matrix. So we only keep the constants. So in the first row it's 1, 1, 2, 1. The second row is 1, 1, 3, 4. The third row is 3, 3, 7, K. Yeah, the blue line, we make a distinction between the coefficients for the variables and the right-hand term, the known factors. So operation clean sweep. So we're going to create a zero over here by removing 1 times row 1 from row 2 and 3 times row 1 from row 3. So the first row is unchanged. The second one is 1 minus 1, 1 minus 1 is 0, 0. 3 minus 2 is 1, 4 minus 1 is makes 3. So here in the bottom row we get 3 minus 3, 3 minus 3, 0, 0, 7 minus 6 makes 1, and k minus 3 is k minus 3. And we may continue. If you make it the third variable, there's a 1, we can sweep the second row and the first row. We can create zeros. Yeah, we aim at creating as much zeros as possible, and here you see what we need to do to get this. Now interchange the third and the second row. The reason why we're doing this will be clear in the following. So again we repeat the system, only the second and the third row are swapped. So returning to the extended version of the system, we return to 1 times x plus 1 times y equals minus 5 minus 2k. z is the third variable equals k minus 3 and the last one where no variable is present. So our conclusion is that when k is unequal to 6, then it says that 0 should be equal to something that is non-zero, then it's impossible to have a solution. Then we'll call the system inconsistent. Well, what if k is 0, k is 6, equals 6? Well, then what we obtain is a more general solution, since now a vector x has a solution. We have three components, x, y, and z, of which the latter z is fixed, but the second one, y, is not fixed. It can be chosen arbitrarily. So in case of which we end up with a vector which can, we can split, and minus 17, 0, 3, and minus 1, 1, 0, which leaves us with a parametric description of a line. Here we have the support vector, minus 17, 0, 3, and here we have the direction vector, minus 1, 1, 0.